What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode number 67 of the Sasha T Show. In the show today, we're bringing back Shia and Michael, both LA-based collectors, flippers, investors in sports cards. Um, you know, we had a lot of traction on, on the last kind of episode we did, so we decided, hey, why don't we just run it back, um, answer more questions, you know, just talk hobby, talk, talk sports cards, and give some tips and advice as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Shia and Michael, uh, thank you guys so much for coming back on the show. I appreciate it. My pleasure. For sure. Thank you so much for having us. No worries. And uh, so the first thing that I think we all thought would be cool to do is just show the cards that we picked up this week. So whoever wants to go first, I think Shia is kind of the young, young gun in the group. So why don't we just have him show off the heat right. that he got this week. All right. So I have a bunch of stuff still in the mail. Um, it's some stuff I got in this week. Two Kawhi Leonard Prism rookies still be cleaned uh, to send out to grading or see if they can grade. Oh, was uh, that an Instagram deal or eBay? That was an Instagram deal. There you go. Uh, four Mbappe Tops Chrome hey, rookies. Hey, Mbappe. Uh, we got a couple more here. Uh, two Kobe Tops rookies and an Anthony Davis Prism rookie. That's some, that's some fire in this week, dude. Thank you very much. <laughs> very nice. So I'll show mine. I got a Barbosa Topps Chrome 2003 Refractor. There you go. Same year as LeBron. Uh, I got it for 30 bucks. Um, it's, you know, I could probably sell it for more, but honestly, this is just a PC piece for me. I think it's a cool card. Gold Refractors from 2003 are just fire, so I got one. And then I got an Mbappe Chrome 2. So I got one of those now. I got a couple more coming too. I just like the Topps Chrome. Um, Prism's cool, but the fact that Mbappe has a Topps Chrome rookie card, I think is really cool. So I'm getting that now. Um, I got a Brady. Uh, it's a Brady EX 2000, or I'm sorry, uh, EX rookie card out of 1500. Um, with his Chrome's going crazy, I just figure like, you know, there's probably some value with the serial numbered rookie cards that have like really nice eye appeal. So I picked up one of these guys in decent shape. And then uh, my big one was I got the LeBron uh, Topps Chrome PSA 10. That's um, Picked that one up off of eBay and uh, happy about that. Oh, that came in pretty fast. Yeah, it was overnight. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, it was, so that was the one where uh, you, uh, like you were able to do it through, through friends and family. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, got off, off of eBay. So one one auction on ebay but i knew the seller so we agreed to a price and then went from there that's dope and then yeah i got um the uh, the kd i've been kind of looking for i finally got that in um and then um some mbappe stuff mbappe world cup out of 125 which i think it's interesting that both of you guys bought tops chrome and are like new into the market that might be something where like people just gravitate towards the tops chrome um that's going to be like interesting to to see what happens and then uh, some Luca, Luca base PSA tens, um, and then uh, the KDs. I got more KDs of, of the. I think this is the paper, right? Just the top. Yeah. Top um, paper white. So I got two of those, which I'm stoked about, and that's what I got in this week. So I'm pretty excited, um, and I, I really just want to grade the Mbappes. Um, but one of the questions we first had was, what are the best ways to find bulk deals? um in general so like just i mean off of like the deals you guys got this week like how were you able to get that done and and like was it more on ebay or was it like instagram deals like how did you kind of go about that and what advice could you really give to people that are trying to get into it and, and are looking for deals mike you want to go sure so um i it's great ig stories um ig posts you know if you're just scrolling on ig you can find a lot of stuff eBay as well. Like, you know, something that I'll commonly do is if I'm looking for Luca Prism on eBay, I'll just put in Luca Prism lot and I'll just see what comes up. And if there's something that looks like it's a clean lot, that's going to go. Um, or if it's buy it now, you know, I'll try and see if I can get it for a better price. So that's a good way to do it. Um, you know, these virtual card shows that uh, 610 sports cards, Justin started great yeah. way to do because you can treat it like an actual card show where if there's four or five cards that you like, you can, instead of saying, Hey man, what's your best on this one card? You can, you know, run numbers real quick, put them all together and say, hey, man, would you take two grand for all these? And commonly when you do that, people are going to say yes, because it's a whole bunch of cash. You know, it works out so you're getting a really good deal on each individual card. So I'd say like that. Um, so personally, I have been looking for bulk 
sales on eBay and it is not easy, not easy at all. Um, one reason a lot of people do bulk deals is to grade. That's how I do it. And on eBay, it pops up, but you got to do your background research. You got to look and see, does the seller grade? Because if they grade, it's telling why would they sell eight raw Prism uh, Lucas when they have Prism PSA 10s all over their page. Um, that means clearly they're not going to 10 or else he, they would have sent it in. Um, I would say continue looking at whatever your search is you're looking for. I look on eBay every day, the same couple searches, multiple times a day to go and look for this, the same thing or whatever I'm looking for. Uh, I do auctions ending soonest and newly listed offers. Those are my two settings that I do. And I do them multiple times a day just to see. And then Instagram wise, I would say be active on Instagram and watch out for the accounts that you know are going to sell those lots who are known for selling on the Instagram story or whatever, and be on the lookout for that. Um, at all times, I would say I did the deal with the guys. It was an Instagram story and I was lucky enough to be one of the first ones to look at it. I swept up, said sold. And that was the deal. It's as simple as that. I would say, learn the people that, um, have the lots, the ones that you find that are easy to work with. Cause some people on IG have the lot, but you've had experience with them and maybe it won't pan out. Um, like it usually does. So I would say figure out people and look on eBay. Got it. So, um, <clears throat> this is the kind of the follow up question from that personally, what does the day to day life, um, for buying, selling and trading, sports card at scale, right? Really look like, I think a lot of people just, you know, think it's, it's, I don't know, easy in a way, especially when first starting into it, but what is really like the day-to-day -day life, life look like? I know me personally, like I'm on eBay a ton. I'm on Instagram a ton, just looking for deals and stuff. And I feel like, um, you know, when, when people are new coming in, maybe they don't really see what kind of work goes into it. Um, so can you kind of give us a little bit of insight of what that really actually looks like? Um, absolutely. So, um, you know, when I wake up in the morning, uh, you know, I can't wait to check my phone so I can look to see if there's like, you know, stuff that friends sent me or stuff that just popped up on eBay or on Instagram and stuff like that, you know, and that keeps me up at night when I'm supposed to be going to bed. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I just like doing it. I've always done it. And that's what everybody that's serious about this is doing at every level in this game, whether it's low end, mid end or high end. I mean, you look at a guy like Nat Turner, you know, he even said, and I'm sure it's true. And he's probably even being conservative. He spends two to three hours a day on eBay. Like, and I don't know that at all. And people might think like, Oh wow, that's crazy. It's like, but people at every level of the game are doing that just because it's what we like to do. We looking for, you know, new deals and new cards to get and stuff like that. And looking to see what prices are and catch up on prices and everything. So, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it, but it doesn't feel like work because we just like doing it. Um, so that's something that, you know, I think is really important to consider if uh, you're looking to get into this field and start making some money doing it is that it requires a lot of work, but it won't feel like work if it's fun for you. Yeah. Just to kind of piggyback on that. Um, I don't know about you guys, but personally I cannot sit on eBay for hours consistently. I break it out throughout the day. Uh, first thing I do usually in the mornings is I go on the phone. I look at Instagram first. I look on Facebook second and I look on eBay third. And I always do that at night. I do the same thing. And there's always a in the middle. So depending on how much time I have, I always check eBay at some point, always Instagram, always Facebook. Um, so I would say that getting into it, I would say don't buy to buy um, and don't sell to sell. Um, I made that mistake uh, with uh, Mr. Sasha over here. I sold to sold. And uh, no kidding, next day I made a big mistake. Um, so I would say um, kind of be level-headed. Think about it um, before buying. Um, always think about kind of don't just do it just to do it. Think about what's going to happen after. What can I do? So let's say, for instance, this Kawhi. Why did I buy the Kawhi? I think Kawhi is cheap right now. I think he's going to go up in price. Also, it's raw. 
I think, okay, if it grades well, it'll go up even more. I can either hold it or I could sell it. Either three ways it'll work out because I bought it at a good price. I could profit off of it. Yeah. So I would say just buy what you like, but buy it with reason. Let's say you like a player, but you think he's going to go down, then don't buy him <laughs> or don't buy him yet. Wait and just do your research because if you don't do your research, you're going to lose money just yeah. like in the stock market. Yeah. If you do oh. day trading and you don't know what you're doing, you're going yeah, to you're gonna lose money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what has the process looked like to get to this point now where you're very comfortable with everything you're doing, right? Um, like how did, how did it kind of go come about where like you got to where you are now? Was it just like a lot of like, like you guys said, researching, doing your due diligence and, and day to day, right? and staying focused from day to day or, or like how kind of how kind of did that process come about for you guys to where you are now like you want to go or me yeah sure so i think um you don't really even think about it just because it's it's just what you kind of do i mean um you know and when i got back into this really strong uh a couple of years ago um you know it's just a matter of you get on eBay and you start checking out prices of stuff that either you have that you were, that you had been holding for a little while. And all of a sudden you get looped into the rabbit hole of now you're checking on Instagram and Facebook and getting into these communities to where you're getting more followers and friends on Instagram and getting more friends on Facebook and doing more deals with people. I mean, I, I can remember a year ago, um, I hadn't even done a deal on Facebook. Well, I mean, I'd done a couple deals on Facebook, but not in any of the big groups. Yeah. And so I remember having to, you know, ship first a couple of times and like, you know, Brutal. kind of just like get a couple of vouchers and stuff yeah. and a couple of references. And now it's like, I've done so many because I've like had so many, not a ton of sales, but I've had a lot of sales on Facebook that if someone's looking for a vouch on me, uh, you know, they can just make a post real quick and say, Hey, can we get vouchers for Coleman cards? And then I totally forget about all these people that I've done deals with that are commenting like, there you go. And so it just, it just builds, you know, it just builds. And, um, I think, uh, you know, for me, a big thing of it is reading in books and stuff and like investment principles and really having strong principles and learning from really smart minds like Warren Buffett and like Ray Dalla, um, and just picking the brains of all these incredible, uh, books that are out there as far as like investment advice and everything. And, and really, you know, being smart and and making sound decisions and stuff like that and i think shia made a good point which is don't just buy to buy like don't buy because you really want to buy something you know have a systematic approach of why it is a good decision that you're buying it um personally me i hate spending money i don't like spending money but i have to spend money to buy things and then try and you know have them go up in value or flip them or whatever um and so therefore I, you know, decision process on a buy is extremely thought out. Um, you know, for instance, there was something that ended on eBay today. I've been watching it for seven days, like a hawk. I had done a ton of research on it. Today was the big day. I put in my bid and it was a monster bid and um, I got outbid on it. And so now all that work is just down the drain on one yeah. buy. Um, so it just happens. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, I think Shy made a lot of points about don't just buy to buy and don't just sell to sell. Um, you know, just having a systematic approach and knowing what you want and, and knowing what you're trying to do and everything. And, and look, you're going to make a ton of mistakes. Like I make mistakes every single day. Like I sell things at the wrong time. I buy things that go down. Um, but the whole thing is learning from your mistakes and keeping with it. And if you like something a lot, then it's easy to do that. It's easy to make those mistakes and learn from it. So that's where I'd say I contrib or attribute to, uh, attribute why I'm at the place that I'm at is because I just like doing this so much that I'm willing to make all the mistakes and do all the things that I don't want to do, yeah. um, you know, as, as far as this hobby is concerned. Well, so. and it's interesting too, because you're literally, this is what you do full time, essentially. Um, how did that like process come about? Like, how did you, like, where were you at before? Like, what were you doing before this? And then were you like kind of doing this on the side? And then you're like, oh, wait, like, let me just try going into this full time. Like, how did that kind of all go about? Absolutely. So this was a side hustle and um, I was a bartender. I was making, you know, about $3,000 a month bartending here in LA. And uh, basically I took uh, the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University class in late 2017, which teaches you all about how to get out of debt and how to have a budget 
how to really allocate where every dollar is going. And I really took off with it. And so I had a budget every month and, you know, I wasn't making what I, you know, thousand dollars wasn't a lot to some people. To me though, it was like, Hey, look, I'm going to take that 3000. I'm going to make that thing work for me. I'm going to cut corners here, you know, only on what I have to spend. And I made it so that, you know, half of that was just going towards cards. Every month I was just buying cards with half my income. And then I, you know, look, I didn't go eat out. I didn't go take trips. You know, I was just literally funneling money into buying cards. And then got to a point where I had an, enough cards am amassed that I was able to just quit my job and just start flipping cards and, and replace that $3,000 income with just selling cards. So, you know, and even at that point, I didn't want to do it. My best friend made me promise to do it. And he said, you know, you like shake my hand right now and promise me that you're going to quit your job and put in your two weeks uh, right now. And cause, cause I know what you're doing. I know you can, you can do this. And I was scared as all hell. Yeah. And I just did it anyway. And it turned out okay. Uh, knock on wood. So. That, that's a, like a amazing story. I guess uh, you really trusted your best friend on that too. <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, worst case scenario, I could have just got another bar job though. So no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Shai? How does, you know, how's kind of your day-to-day -day life, especially like, cause you're still in school, you're dealing with school, high school, all that sort of yeah. shit, AP classes. And also you're doing this right on the side or, I mean, you could, are you even like, are you spending maybe like the same amount of time you are um, with cards, the same thing in school or is it like more like, how is it like? Um, depends on the day. Um, I'm pretty much full on in school. I need a, that's my top priority by far. I, I, you know, yeah. keep my straight A's. I'm getting ready for college. I'm in my junior year. So this is the key year. Um, I got straight A's last semester with, five APs. So I'm trying to keep that. And that's not a load. I have, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, now we're closing now I'm on, I, I couldn't even believe it when I was talking to my parents today. This is the last week of school this week. Oh shit. So I, I, I did. I honestly didn't realize it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so honestly, it depends on the day. Monday through Wednesday this week, I was supposed to call my friend, Jimmy. Um, he does stocks. He's in the card game. Sniper man. This is his name. Super nice. And we we're supposed to talk about cards, about stocks, about everything. And I was supposed to call him, I think, on Monday. And I was so slammed for three days. I called them yesterday. So um, it really depends on the day. Uh, school comes first for me. Um, if time allows and because I also practice and there's certain things I need to get done in the day. Yeah. Um, that if cards allow for it, then I'll do cards as well. But cards is not the top priority. Mine is by far education, then practice slash sports, and then it's cards. Uh, um, like this summer, though, like since you're not having, like, are you taking summer classes or are you going to put like, or you're going to probably have more time for cards in the summer, right? I, I will have more time, um, especially during this time. Obviously, I'd like to be out with my friends doing various things. And it looks like we're slowly opening back up. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, so there will be more time. I do. I ideally wanted to get a summer job this summer. Uh, hopefully I was thinking at a card shop, but obviously we don't know as of now. So, and I need to get my license. So there's also a lot of things I need to focus on during the summer. College is right around the corner. Got to do SAT, SAT ACT. Um, so there's a lot of stuff, but yeah, I will still doing cards. And it's more of just a balance. You just got to balance it, figure out what you want to do. Because for me personally, cards isn't paying my bills. I, I don't have any bills. So it's more of just a hustle for me for the future. Yeah. Um, and especially what I do with all my profit, I invest in the stock market and I'm going to let it sit there for years. Just got to slowly invest. And it, you just kind of, I would suggest building a game plan. Actually, when I got into this, initially way before, it was just for fun. But once I created this in a business, I wasn't setting aside money. I was just reinvesting. Yeah. The way I went about it, it was working. I was getting whatever I made. I was just putting it back in. But at the end of the day, is it the smartest move? It could be because let's say, as Mike said, $3,000 $3, a month from bartending, you could go and set that aside and you'll have the 3K or you could go put that into what is now $150 Luca Prism base. You buy 20 of them, 20 of them, let's say, 10 of them PSA 10, which is percent. If you know what you're doing, you should get more than that. Yeah. 
that's a lot more money than you put in. And it's it's crazy to think about. You're 16, right? 16. I am turning 17 in July. It's um, I think this is just like an amazing, an amazing hobby for younger kids to learn about so many different things too, right? It teaches you about like supply and demand. It teaches you about business. It te- like it literally it marketing even like it, it teaches you a lot. It really does. But coming into it, you also got to be because I took a break. I knew about sports and I was a f- full on sports, yeah. but. For me personally, when during the week, I can't watch sports. I My schedule is so packed. I know Mike, he watches all the – probably the Suns games and all the Luka games. <laughs> I don't have time for watching games. I really don't. Yeah. And I don't think – I can't remember the last time I watched – let's say Luka or uh, Kawhi, LeBron. Unless it's the playoffs, I can't really remember the last time I watched a full game. I, I really don't. I just do the background research. I look at the demand. I look at eBay. And as time goes on, looking at eBay, checking Instagram, going on Facebook, it's not going to seem like a duty. Like, I don't feel like, oh, now I have to go on eBay and go and do my research. No, I don't think like that. It's just what you do, right? It's just what I do. Yeah. It's just what I do. If I have time to do it, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, which actually perfectly leads us to the next question is, what does your research process look like with cards and players? Like, are you more focused on pop report? Are you more focused on, like, the set? Are you more, more focused on player analysis? What are you guys kind of thinking on that? I, Go I, for it, sir. Yeah, I, I don't look at Pop Report, really. Uh, <laughs> what I've learned with the Luca Base PSA 10, I look, but I don't really keep it in account. That Luca Base PSA 10, Pop Report is ridiculous. But you also got to think. The man, there are oh. people that own, like, thousands or hundreds or a large majority of that pop. Yeah. And that – if Luca becomes what people are expecting him to become and what is right now, that'll be an iconic card. Cause look at the other, the, let's say the Giannis prism base. Yeah. That was a lot small, but also look at today. There are a lot more collectors today than there were way back when Giannis was a rookie. Yeah. So I, I don't look at Pop Report really. Um, one thing I would highly suggest is asking people that you trust in the hobby. Usually when I'm making a purchase, I ask either Mike, uh, Sasha. I have a bunch of friends, and it really depends on the market. I know Mike is all basketball, so I usually always ask Mike. Sasha is soccer. I don't know anyone else that does soccer, so I ask Sasha. Then it's like football guys. I have a bunch of football friends. I have basketball friends, so it just comes down to – or even group chat. So I would say get involved with people that you know that know what they're talking about because you just don't want to – to somebody and just they just say yeah do it not do it and you want to have people that have your best interest um because if they don't have their your best interest not gonna look um so i would suggest knowing the people that you're asking always ask um kind of with your instinct um and just do your background research look at the stats in mba look at similar for instance um Look at the team market. I know in NBA, NFL, they're always the big market teams. For instance, Pittsburgh Steelers is a big market team, right? Is there anyone to invest in, in the Pittsburgh Steelers? Probably not the best decision. But, um, for instance, look at Jason Tatum versus Donovan Mitchell. That's a really good comparison. I personally like Donovan more than Tatum, personally. But if you look at the markets, Boston is a lot bigger market than Utah is. Yeah. So I would say – Look at that. Look at the large scheme of things. You can't just look at, oh, he's averaging 20 points per game and he should be worth more. Like, look at Devontae Graham. Look what happened to him. That man was balling. And at the end, he just started chucking up shots. And they were like, his shooting percentage was horrible at the end. Yeah. So know what you're investing. Know the markets. Ask friends. And my main thing is I don't overpay and I don't underpay. I usually, whenever I go into a card, I, I know what it's worth, and I'll, I'll pay that. I don't offer 70% of eBay, 60% of eBay. I'm not like that. Pay what's fair, in my opinion, um, and don't overpay because at the end of the day, in my eyes, you're going to find that card at a, li- a later date for the same amount. You just got to wait. Don't think, oh, no, if I don't do this deal, I'm going to regret it. You may regret it, but you're going to make more good choices than bad. I love it. 
What about you, Michael? Or do you want me to repeat the question? Oh, uh, no, I'm looking at it. I mean, yeah, I know the question. Um, so, yeah, like, you know, there's a lot of different ways to answer this question. So I'm just going to touch on a couple things that come to mind. Um, my research process in general is basically a watch list on eBay, just like everybody, you know, like if I, um, and my saved searches. So a couple times a day, I'll look at my saved searches and if they're blue dot, you know, I'll just check out all of them and see what's going on. And if there's something that piques my interest, I watch it. Um, you know, I'd say at least once a week, I get the notification that my watch list is full. So I have to go and delete all the ended items, you know, just to give you an idea, like I always am watching stuff and I'm just constantly stuff that way. Um, and that just kind of gives me, uh, that's, that's a lot of my research process is just watching stuff, what it goes for, what available. Um, and that way I can kind of track stuff before I'm ready to buy something. Um, and then also too, with pop report, like pop report does matter too, because pop report can give you a lot of really valuable data. And I'll give just a couple of, um, couple of instances. Um, for instance, uh, I just sold my James Harden Topps Chrome Refractor Rookie Card BGS 9.5. Um, now, in general, a 9.5 is usually about half the value of a 10. That's kind of what we see with, like, the LeBron and the KD. Um, but if you look at the LeBron and KD populations for PSA 10, they're both around, like, 150 to 200. And then 9.5s is around, like, 400 to 500, I believe, for, like, both. I'm pretty sure that's accurate for both. So that gives you a ratio of, like, one PSA 10 to like four or five BGS 9.5s. So it kind of makes sense why BGS 9.5 would be worth about half. Well, if you look at the James Harden, there's only 60 gems across say and BGS for that card. Granted, there's only 500 of that card. So there's only 60 and it's like 20 PSA 10 and 37 9.5s. Well, when there's only that many gems, the gem rate is so low on that card. Well, I don't have to settle for half the value of a 10. I can kind of call my shot on the price because I know there's only so many gems available. So, you know, there's a lot, you can, you can kind of like decipher values too. If you're having trouble with values because you can't find any comps, you know, start checking out populations of, of stuff and similar areas and everything like that because you can extract so much data from population reports. Um, so I use that as a big tool for sure. And then, you know, with look at prism PSA 10 is doing over 10,000. Um, you know, I, I pay attention to other populations like, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Alexander, his, it's really hard to tend that card because the top is, uh, top to bottom centering. Um, there's only 477 in the population. Granted, everyone's trying to gem those cards, but like, you know, you could easily buy up 10 or 20 of those cards and just wait for him to have a big game in the playoffs. And that card's going to spike because there's no supply. Yeah. It's just going to. And here's the thing too, is like once, once that Luca hits 700, which it's gonna it like will. that Luca's going up, it's going to hit 700. Once that hits 700, that kind of clears the air that clears the, the way for guys like Trey or Shea or, you know, MPJ for theirs to go up more too. Yeah. Or who'd you say? Those are them. <laughs> oh, did I, 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 AJ I, and MBJ. <laughs> I'm I'm a poet and I don't even know it. Um. So yeah, I mean, like that's a couple of things for sure. Player analysis, the best player analysis you can ever do is just watch the games. Um. You know, I watch every single every single game, so I'm a little bit biased, but also too, like nobody can tell me that I'm not seeing what I'm seeing because I watch all the games. Um. Yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, card look is big. Like, eye appeal is huge. Like, I would tell people to trust their gut with eye appeal. Like, if you think something looks really good, odds are that other people will think it looks really good, too, and a demand will occur, especially if something is new or if, I mean, seeing it with old stuff, too, like, uh, that people are coming around to. So, I don't know. That's a little bit of my research process and stuff. But, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a million ways to answer that. So, yeah. To piggyback on what Mike kind of said regarding the watch list that kind of popped in my head. Um, I actually utilize the watch list, but not as much as I want to. One thing I would suggest is watching not cards you're looking for, but cards you also have. To so look at stuff that's ending, stuff that you have. Um, for instance, I do that with my LeBron Top Scrum 9.5. I want to keep watching how much they're doing. I do that with Kawhi's. Um, 
I would do that with um, not all your cards because your watch list, it's going to fill up and you're going to watch cards that you're going after too. But I would say, especially the cards that you're maybe thinking about moving or thinking about grading or seeing, okay, the risk reward or the market progress. I do that with my main big cards, my Kawhi PSA 10s, my uh, Drew Lock NTRP. I just want to see where that's going. So try, try and thinking in advance. For instance, I'm holding my LeBron top scrum. I think everybody is, uh, or they're trying to buy it. So you just kind of have to learn that um, throughout your experience, I would say. So I would always suggest adding some cards that you have on that watch list. And I'm going to take this time to say if anybody has a LeBron James top scrum PSA 10, sell it to me. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> um, well, uh, did we lose? No, I think you just swiped out of the Zoom. Oh, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I had a call coming in. No worries. Um, it, Mike, it was funny that you brought up uh, Shea because I remember at a trade night, I, I, uh, we, we did a trade and there was like a bunch of base Shea PSA 10s um, for your Trey Silver PSA 10. Yeah. Um, and I think at the time they were probably selling around like 40 bucks, the, the Trey or the Shea base PSA 10s. What are they doing right now? Like one. Buck 30. Uh, they touched 150 today. Oh, that's crazy. They were doing 130. They went to 150, went back to 130, then they're up to 150 again. If he can have, like, a playoff series like he had against the Warriors, dude, for, his prices could, could jump real quick. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you, for my two PSA 9s. Shout out right there. There you go. <laughs> they're um, coming right back your way. <laughs> something we talked about before we went um, – live was was how to avoid ebay tax and michael you brought up some great points can you kind of give you know um a couple i know you said ship my cards like can you can you go like explain to the viewers a little bit more about them and what they do and, and how you're essentially able to avoid you know tax with them and like what, Absolutely. and yeah. also like what like i mean what cards work best for that like i know not all you know cards you know cheaper cards you, you probably wouldn't want to do with that so give a little like background on that that'd be great Absolutely. So I'll give you um, four different options, basically. One is PWCC Vault. One is Ship My Cards. One is finding a friend that you trust in one of the non-tax states. Florida is one of them. I want to say New York is one of them. Maybe it's not. I'm sure New Hampshire is. Oregon for sure is. There's easily a way to just, um, you know, if you Google eBay sales tax states, you can probably find out all the different uh, sales taxes for the states and which ones have it. And then uh, the fourth option is just pay the sales tax. And let me get into that a little bit. Um, so as uh, Shai and I were talking about, we both have in Florida who we have shipped cards to. Um, and we basically just create an eBay address and then create a PayPal address with our name, but with friends um, shipping address. And then we ship the card to them. Uh, they receive it. And then we pay for the shipping to us, obviously. Boom, no sales tax. That's one way to do it. I'd recommend doing that um, on uh, really high-end cards for sure, especially if you trust the person. Um, there's also PWCC Vault, which uh, is in Oregon, obviously. It is tax-free. Um, it's a tax-free state. So you can create a Vault account for completely free on pwccmarketplace.com. You can um, create the same eBay and PayPal shipping address with, PW, with your PWCC vault shipping address. You ship it to them. Now here's what happens with them. They receive the item. Uh, they charge you a 1% ingestion fee. And then it takes a curating period of I think like 15 to 21 days. And it's business days, not days. So it can take up to a month just for your card to be curated. And what that means is that they're gonna appraise what they think the value is worth. And based off that value, they're going to charge you 1% to hold it in their vault. Once the creation period is over and it's processed, you can then submit a request to have it shipped to you. Um, so that is one way to eliminate the fees as well. But you are still going to pay that 1% on the card. Um, then there's Ship My Cards, run by Brian Wells. Great new startup company. There is an Instagram account for it. You can reach out to him. He's a great guy. I've been working with him. Um, you can uh, ship cards to Oregon for them. They're headquartered in Arizona, I believe. So what happens in this exchange is it's shipped from eBay, 
Oregon, their Oregon address. Then it gets shipped to Arizona, and then he processes processes it in Arizona. It goes onto his website, which you get a login information, login credentials, and you can go onto the website, view your shipment status and everything like that, create a shipment request, and then um, you you uh, pay a small fee. It's three dollars for one card, um, five dollars for three cards or more. Those prices go up a little bit I think because he's getting bigger but yeah. um, the way I've kind of figured it out is that if the card you're buying on eBay is a hundred dollars or more that's kind of the break-even point because with ship my cards between the processing fee the postage you have to pay and the fee to use ship my cards it works out to be like about 10 or 11 dollars per shipment request and per card that comes in. so basically you know, if you get a $200 card on eBay, you can save 10 bucks by using ship my cards. You can save maybe 10 bucks by using PCC vault. You can save all the tax if you ship it to a friend. Um, I'd say hundred dollars or less, anything like that. Just go ahead and pay the tax, you know, hopefully get a deal on it and get that thing sent right to you or have it sent to a friend in a non-tax state. So that's everything I found out about avoiding the eBay tax. There's probably other ways too, um, but that's what I know. I have one. Uh, I'm surprised you brought this up because you recently did it. Um, go on eBay, find a guy, make a deal, then tell him to DM you on Instagram, do the deal via Instagram. That is one major way that I love to use because um, I hate eBay tax. Or do you like the picture of your phone number? <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't do the picture of my phone number. My eBay username is the same as my Instagram. So that's how I do it usually. Yeah. Well, I got a question about that. So do you, do you, in the message, this is an eBay message that you're sending and you say, hey, DM me on Instagram in the eBay message? That's not what I do first. So this is a very vast process that I do. No, no, no. So you, you, you talk to him about doing it off eBay, right? And then that's how you get the information across. Usually I don't even do that yet beforehand i go and look at their username and i do like a, at least a 10 to 15 minute instagram search of trying to find yeah, yeah, yeah. this guy's name is without yeah, yeah. him even telling me then Absolutely. after that if that doesn't happen then i'll dm him, Got and it. him hey my ig is oh, no, you'll, you'll this. ebay message him yes yeah. yeah 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 so you'll ebay message him after you've done your research and found out that there's no way to track him down on instagram or anything like because obviously a lot of these sellers have the same name just like us on eBay so that you can track them down really quickly on IG. But there are a lot of people that don't. Yes. So in that case, you send them an eBay message that says DM me on Instagram? Yep. <laughs> well, I don't, no, I don't I say mean, Instagram because Instagram will get flagged. You got to do DM me at IG, uh, on IG at, and then I'll, I'll put my thing. Now look, I would caution with that because it's only a matter of time before eBay even figures that out too. So, you know, it's that that's a good way to do it because you're getting people off eBay. But again, if you're trying to keep it completely on eBay and, and save sales tax, those that I highlighted, that's the way to do it. Getting people off eBay, there's a, there's a few different ways to do it for sure. Um, I think that's a great way, definitely. I'm worried send, send, sending messages that say, hey, DM me. I'll actually say, hey, man, uh, give me a follow. Because sure. sometimes it confuses people, but it's not saying anything about like, hey, man, DM, like message me, right? Because if eBay sees the messages that say, hey, DM, DM me on IG, they're immediately going to send you a, a notice saying, hey, like we know what you're doing. Okay, so I don't know, but I'm in a couple of group chats and they're like big on eBay. And all of them say that eBay, like whatever their machine is, doesn't flag it, IG. It flags Instagram. There's certain keywords that it right. flags and then somebody will look. So just My only thing is we don't know. Or some of these words. Right. Then so what I'm, what I'm saying is at one point, Instagram was a keyword for them. So it's only probably a matter of time before IG is a keyword for them. So I'd say just be careful with that. That's all. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't done the phone number thing. That's what I've been doing. The, the I take, picture? I just take a picture of the phone number and attach it. Yeah. But 
I mean, it works. So, so let me bring in, let me bring in um, some questions from IG. Um, if you identify a good player investment, do you buy in bulk? Ooh. Well, for me, like, if, if I, like, really believe in something, like, I'll go all in on it. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm like, not like that. I, I diversify. If you look at my collection, oh, I have a little dude, bit of everybody. Like, me, it's like, dude, if I believe in something, like, why wouldn't I go all in? That's, like, my thinking. Like, I know that's kind of, like, not, you know, like, at the end of the day, some of the best things. But it works. It has worked out, like, with Luca and Trey, Mbappe. Like, it's worked out. I've, I ha I've had, like, some off ones. Like, Lonzo, you could consider, like, an off one. I went really big on him. But, like, it still didn't come out bad. Um, you know, De'Aaron Fox, that was, you know, that didn't go well. But, like. I mean, the, this the, stuff actually rose. I looked the other day. Prism I mean, PSA like has I, to bring like a buck thirty. I made a little bit of money, but for like how much I put into it, right? It didn't. But like, yeah. I, I mean, for me personally, it's like I if I really believe in something, or if I like did my due diligence and I like know, like it, my me personally, like I feel like I I I checked all the boxes. I I I, I feel confident in it. I I I kind of go um, ham. I guess you could say. One hundred percent. If I can jump in there with you guys. I would say, um, look, like, if you know from deep down, like, you're just like, I know this for sure. It feels so strong. Go all in. That's what I did with Luca last year. Literally right out of the gate for Luca. First couple games he played. I was like, yup, yeah. I'm going all in, even though his price is crazy right now. Yeah. I mean, and that was – his prices were crazy the first couple games. He was, like, the most expensive guy even before his most expensive. A uh, couple of games because people the, at that time thought it was insane to pay those yeah. prices for the card. Yeah, people thought it was crazy to pay 150 bucks for his Prism Silver Raw. Like people thought that was crazy. It was like, give me as many of them as possible. Um, but that being said, like it was such a crazy feeling. Like I had no doubt at all. Like after watching him play, so I'd say like if you have that feeling about somebody, go for it. Like if you feel that way about Tatum, go. For yeah. You feel that way about Lonzo Ball? Go for it. Yeah. But personally, like that feeling only comes around once every couple of years. Like yeah. it doesn't come from much. And I can tell you that I had that feeling in 2007, and it wasn't Kevin Durant. It was Marco Bellinelli. <laughs> so, you know, for every time that I've been right, I've been wrong a million times. Yeah. And that's why I'd say diversify, just like Shia said. Like diversify if you are 100% sure. And if you're 100% sure, just know you could be wrong. And just to add on to that, you may believe in a player, but the market and the position may not be there. Uh, look at a lot of big men right now. Uh, big men don't sell very well. Uh, for instance, DeAndre Ayton is a – Wait, who's our, who's our DeAndre Ayton guy in here? Is it I'm the yeah. DeAndre Ayton guy. Because yeah. you're um, a Suns fan, right? What's that? You're a Suns fan, right? Huge Suns fan. Okay. So, for instance, Ayton is a beast. And he's going to dominate the league, I think, uh, for, for sure. a while. Uh, but there's no hobby load for centers right now. There could end up being, but be careful going all in. He didn't put up the numbers. Is he on a big market team? Probably not the biggest market team. He's not on the Celtics, the Lakers, the Knicks, none of those type of teams. Um, but the position. Um, even look at Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis – Big man, probably the most – is the most dominant big man in the league. Um, and even his prices aren't ridiculous. They're high. Uh, you can get a Prism rookie, I believe, for around 250 unless they went up. Not so sure. So I would be careful. Uh, just kind of do your research. Um, I said ask people, ask your friends before you go all in because you're going all in. Uh, it's a huge risk. So I'd always get in a couple different ideas. Um, I would do that when you're selling a big card, and I also do that when you're buying a big card and when you're trying to go all in. I think there's a mix like, like people will buy LeBron as their like safety, and then they'll go buy up a couple young players, right? Put a couple hundred or whatever it yeah. is into it. So I think that's, I think when you say diversify, I think like, um, meaning like put your money in safe investments and then you're able to like put a little risk more like risk into like younger guys right um, yeah personally i don't go super risk like i don't go and buy guys like grace and allen 
like those type of super like, young would you, guys. Would you buy RJ Barrett right now? I would. Yeah. I, I would. would I mean, like, not crazy, but, like, if you believe in him, yes. Because you yeah, know what? Yeah. RJ yeah, yeah. Barrett is a good player. He's yes. a good kid, and he's in a big market. I upside. agree with Mike saying. Lots of upside. I don't like RJ. I don't like RJ as an investment, but the, all the things point to him being good investment. Big market team, talented, went high overall, and has tons of opportunity in, in the Knicks. So it's there. If you believe in him, go for it. So all the pieces are there. All the boxes are checked. It's just if you believe in him, I would say. Absolutely. I love it. All right, so next up, we're actually going to be doing um, – I'll, I'll, I'm going to – uh, we'll go over three players, essentially. Um, three players that the hobby likes a lot. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll kind of go over them one by one, um, you know, their pop report, what the card's selling for. And it's all going to be base prism PSA 10, like price points. Um, and then we'll kind of uh, all uh, see which player we think will, uh, you know, their price projection. And then also which one we like better as a long-term investment. So the three players are going to be Luka Doncic, uh, Trey Young, and Jason Tatum. Um, Boy, we, Donovan Mitchell got snubbed. I know, I know. <laughs> we can we can we can add him in at the end. But let's go over Luka first. So Luka base prism number two eighty PSA tens. There's about fourteen thousand eight hundred eight total cards graded at PSA, <laughs> with ten thousand three hundred seventy PSA tens, making it a sixty nine percent gem rate. Luca averaged 28.7 points per game, 9.3 rebounds, 8.7 assists, and 33.3 minutes per game and shot 46.1% from the field and 32.7% from three, which you'd think would be a little bit better. Um, but I think he's just take, taking some, like, I feel like he had to take a lot of tough shots. Um, but yeah. anyways, his market value right now, I put at $500, although today I did see a lot of uh, – I saw a couple cards go for higher than 500 today. I thought I saw one at 550. 70, yeah, I, yeah. 572. Yeah. yeah. But just because, like, those were the first ones, I didn't want to, like, say 570. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll keep it at 500, but knowing that a couple did sell for higher than that recently. Um, and so, yeah, that's, I, mean, I mean, he's at 500. He's, he's literally averaging almost, I mean, close to a triple-double per game, and he's only fucking 21, um, which is insane to see. Um, and he's leading his team to the playoffs, right? If NBA does come back, um, they're going to be a playoff team. They'll probably be playing the Clippers first round, which I think is a very interesting matchup. Um, <clears throat> but let's go over the next player, Trey Young. Um, his base prism number 78 PSA 10. There's about 7,236 total cards created, so about half of what Lucas is, um, with 4,661 PSA 10, so 64% gem rate, just a little bit under um, Lucas. He's averaging nearly 30 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, 9.3 assists, and 35 minutes per game on 43.7% shooting on the, from the field and 36 from three. His price is 200 bucks, a mere 200 bucks, which doesn't seem relatively bad, but his team you know, isn't, isn't winning too much, as, as, we, as we know, and, and won't be in the playoff hunt, so we probably won't be hearing much from him until next season. And the last player which has gained a lot of traction these last couple of weeks, I might say, in the hobby specifically, is Jason Tatum. So Jason Tatum's base prism number 16 PSA 10. There's only 3,730 3, total cards created with 2,827 PSA 10s, making that a 75% gem rate. He's averaging about 24 points per game, 7.1 rebounds, 2.9 assists with 35, uh, playing 35 minutes per game and shot 44.8% from the field and 39.8% from the three. I'm curious to see how many threes he takes per game. Uh, do you guys know? Does he take a No idea. Yeah, that's it. Because he's shooting pretty well from three. Um, but his current market value is $330. Bucks. Um, the Celtics are our favorite to come out of the East, I think, probably number two, um, I'd say, with Milwaukee at number one. Um, and, yeah, again, his, his price is at $330. Bucks. So what – what are we kind of thinking about all three of those players? Um, what, what's kind of your six-month projection? And, and who, who will you kind of be going with as your – if you had to just choose one guy as, as your kind of, uh, you know, investment piece? Uh, just to ask your, answer your question, uh, Jason Tatum takes four three-pointers per game. Oh. No, he takes seven. 
Seven. I saw four. Making 2.8, taking 7.1 for 39.8%. That's pretty. Up from four from last oh, yeah, year. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was in one year. I was in year last year. That's crazy. He's he's shooting three more a year, three more a game this year, and his percentage is thirty nine point eight. That's good. That's um, and if he could do that in the playoffs, it's gonna be very interesting. He's got that clutch gene too. Yeah, that's interesting. And he has the he has the lowest pop, which I know we don't you know pop isn't too big of a deal, but still like he has the lowest pop out of all the guys we've been talking about. Um, yeah. But he also has the highest gem rate. So it, it might be something where Shia loads up on all his raw cards and sends them in and gets them graded. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so what are we kind of thinking, like, six-month projection of, like, where these price points would be at? What, what are you guys kind of thinking? I mean, I think uh, Luca, I mean, I think Luca, like, I know he, I've been talking about it a lot. Like, 1K seems very reasonable, but – I. Um... I was not so uh, into the whole Luca PSA 10 thing. And even to this day, I don't really buy PSA 10s. Um, unless it's a card that I really want, like a LeBron TC. Yeah, I would buy a LeBron PSA 10 because those are very hard to grade. Um, and I would buy certain cards. But, for instance, Luca base PSA 10, yeah, I'll pick them up. But I usually like getting the raw. I'm a big fan of crossing from BGS to PSA. Uh, especially because of the huge discount. And if you know what you're looking at, you could pretty much guarantee that you're going to get a 10 on one of your attempts. If it nines, it's resub it. If it nines again, I would say resub it. Because that's three, that's, you put it in for a 45 day, that's 30 bucks. Price jump from the, whatever you're getting, a BGS 9, a 9.5 raw, is so much higher than 30 bucks. Um, so I would say, yeah, I think Luca's going to make a huge jump. Uh, Sasha was buying them, I think, two weeks ago or three weeks ago for four twenty, and they've gone up one hundred and fifty dollars. And Luca has done a, a jack squat. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> honestly, uh, yeah, he's probably uh, in Slovenia somewhere, just kicking it, bro. <laughs> so um, I would say Luca is going to make a huge jump. Uh, depends how you want to buy him. Do you want to buy the raw? Do you want to do the PSA tens? PSA tens are locked in. It's pretty much like the SMP. It's going to slowly go up. It may drop it may, it may drop a little, but it's going to end up finishing higher than it is now. Yeah. It's 100%. Um, if you want the Raws, it's more of a risk, but it's a much bigger reward than just holding it. Um, especially with PSA, what I'm a big fan of is if I send the bases in now, be ready in a couple months, while the PSA 10 is still rising, you're getting those cards and you have them $150, $2, $2 into each one. So whenever they come, let's say in whatever six months that we think it's going to be close to a grand, those $150 cards now probably you're going to be closer to the $300 range, $400 range, just raw or PSA nine. And they're going to go a K if they tend. So I'm a big fan of the cross um, with Trey uh, I'm personally not – I love Trey. I don't think there's time to buy him, though. Um, I think Trey – main thing is because he's not in the playoffs. I think the one way Trey will spike, A, if the season comes back and man starts hooping, yeah. <laughs> um, or B, they pick up a guy. They need to pick up – I think the way that they contend is they need to pick up a star to help Trey. Um Probably a shooting guard or a small, considering they have Capella and Collins. Well, and they'll probably have a good pick in the draft, too. They will probably have a good pick in the draft as well. So, I would say it's big offseason for Trey and Tatum. I hated Tatum when he came in. And I still am a Donovan Mitchell believer. I think Donovan is – if I'm choosing one or two, I'm probably choosing Donovan. Uh, that's just my personal preference. But I did buy a, a Tatum Silver – BGS nine yesterday, um, just to get in on Tatum. I am going to be getting more into Tatum. I've been wanting to, because um, I think he's a beast. He's on a big team. They're good. I think Jalen Brown is also a baller. Um, so I think they're very well built uh, with Kemba. So I think Tatum and uh, Luke are the better buys as of now. I would say all of them will rise. Um, 
within six months than they, when they are now. Uh, but I would say I would mark the order as Luca Tatum, as in biggest growth. I like that. What about yeah, you? Yeah, um, I'm kind of right there too. Uh, <clears throat> I think the Lucas. Um, I think the Lucas are going to go up. I just do, um, and that's just because I've been selling them. Yeah. And I've been watching the demand and people hitting me up for them. And I've been watching how I post a bunch of different stuff. And the Luca Prism 10 sells in two seconds. So to me, just like, you know, I feel like I have like a, a finger on the pulse of that market. Yeah. And the demand is definitely there. So I think those are going to continue to go up. And um, look, like, you know, people want to talk about optic or hoops or select and everything like that. And I get it. Like they're, you know, the eye appeal of some of these cards. Um, just the auxiliary investment, but look like there's tons of people coming into this hobby and they don't have time to think and to like do the research. Yeah. So they're going after the investment card. The Luca Prism PSA 10 is the investment card. That yeah. is the card that everyone's going to go after. I don't care if it's, if there's 10,000 in the pop, I don't care if there's 20,000 in the pop, that card will go up. It's going to go up. And I, I guarantee say- it'll probably be 700 before we know it. I would Sorry, say that in the LeBron Tops Chrome. I think those are the two investment cards. It just Absolutely. depends on, the scale, on your scale. Right, 100%, right? So, like, if the Le- all I know is, look, I get there's 2,000 in the pop for LeBron and 10,000 for Luka. No, LeBron's six. Bad for LeBron. Like, I don't, What's that? I don't think 2,000 is bad for LeBron's rookie card. Like, That's just, tiny. That's nothing. I don't get why people – I don't know. It there's just, nothing that that is nothing for everyone like everybody wants that card there's only two thousand of them i know it is i don't know it's, like guess, there's a reason why it went up to 6500 from 2000 you know do you think psa is going to give a lot of tens on that for people sending in no, no everyone's I, no absolutely I, not i've i saw uh i've seen multiple cards of that that look cleaner than the one that i have as a 10 get eights and nines absolutely so so, um, so Luca, I'm high on. I just think, you know, just like you, said, Sash, like uh, Luca has a triple. We haven't seen playoff Luca yet. We no. haven't seen playoff Luca yet. And and this is a kid who won Euro League MVP and t- and led, didn't just play, led his team of 28 year old men to the Euro League finals, and they won it. Yeah. And then he immediately came to the States and almost immediately started an NBA season and, and just ha- didn't even show any, like, fatigue or anything like that. And he, I mean, was this kid is, he was out of shape that first year. Exactly. This kid is a freaking superstar. So when we see playoff, forget about it. Everyone, everyone who's been on the fence – they're going to see this kid in a playoff game and they're going to say, okay, I'm not on the fence anymore. I want one and I don't know what the price is. Exactly. So the price is going to go up. So to Tatum, Adam, go ahead. Okay, go for it. Uh, just for Luca, I know we talked about this. I don't even know if we talked about this last show or whenever we were just talking regarding the base, the red, white, and blue, and the green. Um, clearly, there are less red, white, and blue and greens than there are base. So what do you guys think about? buying a red white and blue or green over a base and i how far off they are from each other i don't know how much psa 10s go for either of them but what do you guys think about all that i wouldn't buy either i'd base so sash what do you think for the longest time i couldn't understand why red white and blue was selling for less so i was under the assumption just fucking buy up red white and blues it's going to eventually sell more for base but i think what we've seen has been that there is there's a lot of especially new people coming into the hobby they don't know what red white and blue is but they they understand base so they're just buying that so the demand for red white and blue just hasn't been there so like do i think like from normal hobby standards the red white and blue should be more expensive but i just don't the demand hasn't been there the last couple months so like why would it change like it probably won't um so i would stick to base um, I mean, I think the green sell for a decent amount more, though, don't they? They sell for like 200 bucks more than the base. Uh, I'm not aware. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's something down there. So, like, if the base is at 500, the green's at like 650 or 700. Like, I'll pick up a green. Like, I, I bought a green from you, Shia, um, a couple months ago. Like, I'll pick it up. But, like, I, I just still think it's very interesting. 
why the red, white, and blue is literally selling for less than the base. That's like where I'm confused about. But I, don't, I don't think it's selling less. I, I saw I, one go for six. I've seen it, dude. I've seen the red, white, and blue sell for less than the base. Let me see. It happens. It definitely happens. So just to continue on real quick, one more thing about Luca Prism base, the silver is rising, right? So we've seen the silver go from 2K now it's up to 2650. We have a couple of sales at 2650. Yeah. So why isn't that Luca why isn't that prism base moving? It's it is. Silver, I mean it, it is. Silver will go like silver will go first and then we'll just see base kind of slowly come up with it. Right, because people are going to say why get the silver when I can just get five of the base and you know have a little bit of inventory. 1000 bucks isn't ridiculous for Luca. Like it's like it just seems like that's the projected value that it's going to be at. How right. much is the raw Lucas for now? Uh, no. Seven hundred, seven fifty. Yeah. So check this out real quick. Let's talk about the greens with Luca. A green sells for what? One point two x what the base sells for PSA ten. Can you take a guess what the Tatum green PSA ten sells Ooh. for in comparison to the base Tatum PSA ten? Well, it's gonna be more than the Celtics green, right? over double yeah it's green so up. look like that eye appeal is everything and if the colors don't match i'm going for the base it's like the blue luca the one out uh, 199 out of 99 the red white and blue for luca looks good yeah it does and it's got a refract it's refract you know it's a refractor so it's cool but I so if you guys were to have a red white and blue psa 10 let's say luca, would you sell that and buy a base or would you keep the red white and blue Instead of the base, I or would you buy a green or something? I I personally just don't like the red, white, and blues. They look like candy canes. I'd rather have the base. I, they look like barbershop poles. Yeah, I had a red, white, and blue, and I just kept it because I bought it for sixty bucks. But I mean, nope. it just seems like the market is showing us that they don't want red, white, and blue. Um, no matter how much I like. I'm so confused about why they, why not? Like, you know what I mean? Like, in the it market, doesn't make sense. The market is the market. Um, so, I mean, it, it's, it shows what, where the value is at, but uh, just in my head, it doesn't make sense. So I don't know. It just, what would you rather have a LeBron TC 10 base or LeBron TC 10 red, white, blue? I feel, <laughs> dude, like, I feel like a what year, would what look, year <laughs> that would look dope as fuck. Rookie, no, rookie, 2003. A red, white, and blue. Yeah, yeah. I think that would look sick. I think there's, it's too busy. There's too much going on with it, man. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. So, if you go back, like, there weren't many parallels. Like, yeah, in were. Hawaii year, how many, wasn't it just, like, 2012? Was it just base, silver, green? I think. Yes, base, I'm silver, green, and gold. gold. Green gold, yes. So those are like the, I guess, the OGs and everything else comes on. Kind of like how it is with baseball. Uh, there's the true Bowman color, and then there's the off. Like the off ones are like the speckle and the green and all that. But then you look at the blue, and the like that is like the king and like the gold. Like all the waves no one wants. Everyone wants the true gold and the true blue. Somebody said red, red white, and blue prices get no love, especially – 18 and 19, it's the worst design of all time. I, I don't disagree. I love 18, 19 Prism. I just don't care for red, white, blue. I just don't. So, like, let's say, let's say there's a red, white, and blue Luca Base PSA 10. It was $450. Luca Base Prism PSA 10 was $500. Which one are you taking? Base. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. But the, the red, white, blue PSA 10 does six bills. No, red, white, blue, I've seen sell for less than base. I'm telling I just you. checked the comp. I'm t I don't know. I'm going to show it to you, right? I'm pulling it up again. I'll, I'd be happy that it's going for more. But what I've seen recently is it's going for less. I can't see. I, I trust you, though. I'm glad go. it's going for more if it is. Look, here's why I take the base. Because if you give me the base at 500 and you give me the red, white, blue at 450, it'll take me two seconds to sell the base for 525. Yeah. It'll take me a week.
sell the red, white, blue for 475. Yeah, so I mean, uh, people are commenting too. They're saying the red, white, and blue is selling for more. So I guess the market went up for the red, white, and blue because for the last couple of weeks, what I've been seeing is red, white, and blue selling for less, which didn't make sense in my head. Um, but like that's, I think that's a good thing then if red, white, and blue is starting to sell for more. But I see now that it's selling for more, I I would still I would pay less and get the base. I agree. For sure, I, I'm getting Absolutely. the red, white, blue PSA ten in. I'm from Will. I'm gonna probably sell it or I'm gonna try trading it down or I'll try trading it up. <laughs> One of those two. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to say real quick to go back because I want to say it's I agree with you guys. Well, I agree with Shia. Shia. It's Luca, Tatum, Trey. I think the Luca has great uh, potential right now going into these playoffs that are gonna restart in July. Yeah. I think that the Tatum has that same potential as well because I think the Celtics are a dark horse in the East. Every just bank it on the bucks but i think the celtics um have the shooting and the defense and the and the power to definitely make a run and i think tatum would be a part of that he hit oh, yeah. some clutch shots in the fourth quarter watch that card go up um i think that people will will say the market will basically say that card can't be more valuable than the luca so i think if the luca goes up that gives that tatum some leeway to go from 400 to 500 and then i think the tray is look if you if you like tray buy them up and hold them. But I just think the tray is probably a card right before next season starts. You saw how that roster is looking. Yeah. And I think those Hawks are going to get out to a fast start, just like they did uh, in the first three games of the season. Like Trey balled out for three games. They were two and one. People thought they were going to be good. I think that's going to happen again. So I think it's a hold card for right before the season starts, right when it starts, you can probably get a nice profit off of it. A suggestion yeah. would be buy it raw after season ends grade it so once off season is coming to a close you'll have that card in hand yeah i think i think buying trey when everybody in the playoffs is going to be talking about tatum and luca is like the perfect time to buy him yeah i agree and then you just hold until you know the hype builds up for the season then you can sell a little bit make some money and then hold the rest like whatever you want to however you wanted to kind of go about it. Um, but I think that next year the, the, the Hawks can be a playoff team. But, yeah, I think Luka won, of course, Jason Tatum two, Trey Young three. Um, I mean, Jason Tatum last summer was like – I remember his base piece at 10s were selling for like 30 bucks. Yeah, they yep. were cheap. We're selling one for 30 bucks. Like – They were cheap. I, well, one, the one thing that I have – uh, with Jason Tatum, the question mark I have, I think a lot of people are, I think the reason the price has gone up recently is just because the Celtics are supposed to do good in the, in the playoffs. Um, so like, I mean, I, I, if they, like, if they get knocked out first round, what happens to his card? Like, I think with Luca, you know, they're playing this, they, they're playing the Clippers. So like most, you know, 95% of people think that the Clippers will win. So I don't know if that, you know, him winning the playoffs, you know, would affect his price point, but I think that Tatum, you know, if they if the Celtics get knocked out in the first round, or if he's just not if uh you know the other guys on that team are just playing better than Tatum, it's gonna be interesting to see where his price point goes. I agree. I don't think the first round will have that big of an impact. I think he'll probably outperform. I think he'll probably lead the team, honestly. I think Kemba, I know Jalen Brown has some off nights. Um but sometimes yeah, they got Kemba, they got Jalen Brown, who else? And Pedro. They got Hayward, right? Marcus Smart, Hayward. Yeah, but yeah. Oh, that's a lot of guys. Like, it's gonna be interesting to see if if Tatum from the jump will like make his mark of like, yo, I'm leading this team. You know? Yeah, that would be very interesting. I think he's good, but I also feel like it's a risk. But I I would still keep him in spot in between the other two absolutely i mean luke is luca the demand is there the, and, and again like playoffs aside it's hobby demand is different than what happens in the yeah. nba so yeah i mean look at if, if 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 it all mattered about performance brandon ingram would be a little bit closer to what luca is i mean like the, the margin wouldn't be so vast between brandon ingram and luca Doncic. yeah a uh, quick, quick question. I know we we're talking about parallels earlier. 
And this is an interesting little question I got for you guys. So we got the Trey blue, yellow, green from Choice. And then we have the silver. And I'm pretty sure these two sell for pretty close. Yet the blue, yellow, green is much harder to hit. And there's obviously a lot less. So it's kind of like the same thing with the red, 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 and blue and greens is there's a lot less, but there's hobby demand. Everyone wants a silver. So do you think I mean, people the, like the blue, yellow, green, right? People. I think they do. I just don't think for some, I know Shays goes for two, uh, for six for a, a Shea and Trey goes for 240. Yeah, I think, um, I would say that maybe not enough people know about the blue, yellow, green. As a choice. That's why that it hasn't picked up in demand. Again, there's a lot of new people coming in the hobby where they're just getting used to base prism, you know, prism silver. They're not, you know, they don't know about much else. So maybe when, you know, education takes, you know, into effect on these people, then, then the demand for, for those, you know, for different parallels goes up. Um, because I feel like if I if I had the choice between the two, I would take I wouldn't take the silver. Uh, I don't know, just me. I wouldn't yeah. take the silver either. I would take the blue, yellow, green. Yeah, I I would disagree with you guys. I'd take the silver because there's more demand. One hundred percent. I mean, again, like the the blue, yellow, green is great. It's just it takes so much effort if you don't know the market to learn about that Prism Choice short print card and figure out because it's not serial number. Mm -hmm. So like, again, like I would take the red out of 299 for 1100 bucks right now, which is what they're going for over the silver for 700, you know, but I would take that silver just because that silver man, that is the heartbeat. So if Trey has a big night, that's what's going up. Blue green yellow is not. I, so I would take the silver man. I can't. Yeah. I mean, I can't argue with that right there. I mean, the man's there, so it makes sense. Yeah. Um, next up, guys, Mosaic Basketball. I know we've been hearing a lot about Mosaic Basketball these last couple weeks. Um, somebody asked, will, will we see it take over Prism Basketball due to the rumors of it being limited, or will prices begin to decline um, and kind of slow down? What do you guys kind of think? Uh, no, it will not take Prism. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of new people are thinking. Uh, I don't think they will. I don't think Prism is king. Prism is yeah, – yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. these are all just little little chumps compared to Prism. Um, and uh, Mosaic, I know they say the print run and all that. Um, I think it's crazy that they're going for $800 a box, and I think it's really coming down to the inserts. I think this is one of the only products I've seen that the insert, inserts are really driving that market. Uh, prism boxes it's all the color it's all the silvers and it's all the base. Uh, but this one it seems that the stained glass um, case hit and there are a couple other inserts of LeBron especially going crazy and I think that's one main reason why these boxes are skyrocketing and I do think they'll dip but I don't think they'll dip they're like bills I don't think they'll dip to like four I think they'll dip to maybe six six fifty at the lowest Probably around seven. That's my guess. What about you, Michael? Um, I'm going to have a hot take. I'm going to say that Prism is uh, too full of itself, and it's making too many printing errors and stuff like that, and it's going to sap up the market, and it's going to uh, degenerate and uh, turn into something that is just a joke. And we're going to wonder why we liked Prism so much. And Mosaic is going to take over and knock it off its throne. Um, that's just my hot take. Uh, I'm just saying it because, I mean, I can, I can, I'm just going with that argument. I, do I actually think that's going to happen? Probably not. But I'm but saying it as, is, does have a good looking card this year. It's more I'm, well I'm saying, put together. Yeah. I'm just saying it is that no one ever sees the, they just don't. Like, so look, like the feeling I've been getting from Prism as of late is like, it just seems, like it's it's dated now and it's coming out every year and it's and it's being printed more and more and maybe th maybe this mosaic isn't the one to knock it off but i think this is the first signs we're seeing of new products coming along that people are gravitating towards because they're put they're 
in value by having really cool inserts and uh, showing people that they're not taking them for granted. Whereas I think Prism takes people for granted a little bit because it's literally just printing the same thing and adding a few more color variations so that it can print more um, to try and get as much money as possible. And I think eventually what wins out is value created. And I think that Mosaic is creating a ton of value by these short print inserts, which people are going crazy over. So I think this is, um, this could be an indicator that Prism is, is on the decline and Mosaic is on the incline. I'll go with that. Do you, so Mosaic, if I'm not mistaken, is made by Panini, right? Correct. Yeah, the name I'm pretty sure is Prism Mosaic. I think it's like a, a branch of Prism, I think. It would well, be, yeah. It would be interesting to see if like every Panini, like when they go to their drawing board, they're like, oh, like let's make Mosaic. Um, you know what prism is right now like it would be interesting to see if they ever like think about it that way um, so just add the colors and all those in well, some be like oh like this year like what they did is like let's make you know prism super shitty like off-centered and make mosaic this super clean product and see what happens to the market that's a great theory man and i just want to touch on like look i mean think of some of the hottest sets ever tops chrome um exquisite prism right these sets came out, I mean, exquisite aside, Topps Chrome came out and uh, it came out as kind of like a gimmicky thing. And, you know, it came out in small quantity. It wasn't supposed to be big. And then collectors just gravitated towards it, loved it. And it created this huge thing where Topps Chrome was like the thing. Same thing when Prism came out. When Prism came out, it was a small batch product, basically. And, you know, they had no idea it would take off like it did. And collector's taste is what made it take off. So, yeah. you know, it could, it could be happening with Mosaic. I mean, the thing is, we're not going to see it. It's all going to be the market telling us. So, And this leads to the point. It's like when we see all these new people coming in and buying cards, you know, Prism to a lot of people are, right now already is, you know, they're out, they're out priced. They, you know, they can't afford it, right? So, exactly. You know, do we think that Mosaic and Select and Hoops and, and Status, you know, are they going to gain a good majority of the market just because they're cheaper and people can't afford that product, right? I would, I would say yes. I would definitely say yes. I already, I already know, you know, really, really great collectors that love Status, you know, I love, just I've, love I have, Status. I have some Lucas Status that I need to grade. Like, I, I think it's a beautiful product. Absolutely retail product no yeah that's crazy yeah um, i mean again metal universe was retail no metal universe well again that's what i meant to say another set metal universe when metal universe came out in 1997 it was like it was nothing it wasn't anything it was a small batch product i have a kg one and i think it's a beautiful card right um, collector's taste yeah it's it's interesting to see like what like see tops chrome i would Topps Chrome in, in, in basketball, like with LeBron, and then Topps Chrome in soccer, what we're saying. I love the product. I think it's great. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. Um, let me bring in some of these questions. I don't understand why Luca was $60 months after winning Rookie of the Year. Why did it take so long for his prices to rise? I don't think it took that long. I mean, it, it took was, super long. I mean, like, especially in the hobby today, like going from 60 bucks to like, what was it in uh, you know, like November? It was like almost 300. That's a big jump, especially like at that time in the hobby. Like it wasn't like really known that a card would go up like that, especially for like expanding. Right. And the of the year prices was kind of built into his price already anyway, because it was, he was so far and away the rookie of the year. I mean, Trey kind of made, some at the end of the season but you know the prices get like again the guys you know you know this the price isn't what it's worth right now the price reflects what people think it will be worth in the future so five hundred dollars for luca prism psa and that's the price that people think it's going to be because what luca's going to be and that's every single price on anything. Same stocks, everything. It's just the value that we think it will be. 
And then a surprise happens, like Luca coming in balling in the first part of the second season, being even better than anybody thought he – like, people didn't think he could get better. He surprised the entire market, and then they went up to 200. So, no, yeah. I agree. Um, wh- another question we got in. Besides your obvious low-risk investments that are mid to long-term, are you always looking – for steals below market to flip once you receive them? I mean, I, I mean, I think that's kind of asking like, um, you know, you already have your already like investments that you make that you're already doing day to day. Um, but I mean, and then it's basically just asking like, if you find steals, are you flipping them right away? Or are you going to still hold on to them with your other investments that you have? If that kind of makes sense. Basically, like, if there's money on the table right now because you got it for a steal, do you just cash in and get that like money? This card, like, if this card was, like, 1000 bucks and you bought it for 700 and you know you can get 1000 bucks right now because you bought it, but you already have a bunch of other cards that you're holding, like, would you still hold this card or would you just flip, take the quick profit and move on to the next thing? Depends on the card. Depends what you need, too, yeah. It depends on the card and what you need. Like, if you believe in the card, right, you don't need the money. But if you believe in the card, but your car broke down, you need money. I mean, you know. That's like that's like an example. That would be you send a Luca in to PSA. You spent 150 on plus 10 dollars. That's 160. It tens. Now it's 550. Okay. Can you afford to keep it? No. Okay. Then you sell it. You can't afford 100%. to keep it. Then you hold it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Depends. Great. That's a great way to put it, Shy. Yeah, I I think that a lot of. I think what we're also going to be seeing once like the NBA is back and everything, a lot of people are going to start over leveraging themselves um, because they're just so new to the market and they see all the money. And um, I mean, it might play out well for them, but I think there's going to be situations where like the, like when people come in, there's so many mistakes you can make and, and there's going to be, you know, a lot of new collectors and investors coming in and losing, losing money, I guess. I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. Because I think that when you start off, there's so many mistakes you can make. Um, mm-hmm. And, I mean, it kind of sucks. And people will – and one of the downsides, like, people will take advantage of you if they can, especially, like, in this hobby. Absolutely. Especially if you don't know what you're doing. All right, I think that's going to be it, boys. I think we answered a ton of questions. Um, I mean, we went over a ton of stuff, too. Um I know last I know last episode we went over like the cards you're looking for now, but um, Michael, didn't you kind of get your LeBron already to this week? So didn't you kind of already acquire it? Yeah, I got my LeBron, and uh, it's a cool story. I graded it my I graded this exact copy myself, and got it to Gem, and uh, and I sold it right when the season got suspended because I was a little bit over leveraged. So I sold it, and uh, I saw it come for auction because I know who I sold it to, and it was their account. And I checked the serial number because I had photos of it, and uh, it went to auction, and I bought it for definitely what I sold it for. But uh, it's back in my collection, and I'm very happy to have it. Shia, what was what was the card that you wanted last week? I know was it the Kobe? I think I don't remember. (laughs) Uh, Kobe (laughs) tops Chrome, I think it was rookie with no greening. Very hard to find. One, so uh, somebody asked me yesterday, will, a, will, if you buy a clean Kobe, could it possibly eventually green? Yeah, I saw yeah. something today in a group chat. It was like, will yeah. all the Kobe's eventually be green? Um, I, I would say they could, but I think you, you got to put them in something so it doesn't. I know there's like the new sleeves that it doesn't really show the card. It just shows the label. Yeah. I would say if you're going to, if you find a clean Kobe, put in one of those. Uh, there's no real point in keeping it out in the sun. Um, I would say kind of protect it, protect it. Uh, but I obviously prefer the color than the green. Yeah, I, I just didn't. I think if a card's like already not green after 20 years, I feel like it's just a low possibility that it would green. Um, one last minute question because somebody's asking real quick. What is your take on Devontae Cram? Is he a buy? Is he a sell? Is he a hold? Sell. That's a tough one. Um, I would say sell too. I would. I don't know how much he's dropped. Um, okay, depends where you bought. If you bought below, before the big boom, I'd sell. 
if you bought during you bought at the boom, at the, hole, at the height, you bought at the height. If, oh, you bought at the height. Oh shit. Um, I would say sell, and then if you really believe in him, buy up in a couple months when it's cheaper. Absolutely, yeah, I'd probably if sell. Really yeah. yeah. Look, just, Kemba Walker is not worth anything, and he's amazing. Damian Lillard. Russell, Damian Lillard. Russell like, Russell. how many more guys are going to come in just like Devontae Graham? Yeah, I agree. Uh, well, I thank you guys for, for coming in today and doing another show. Hopefully we can kind of make this like a weekly thing as, if we have time because of this whole quarantine action. Um, so I appreciate it, Michael and Shia. Um, and hopefully we can see you guys on another show very, very soon. For sure. Thank, thank you, you so much, much for having me, man. No worries.